So good to see everybody here, everyone who's not on vacation. <laughs> um, I just want to uh, start off immediately by just thanking all of the veterans who have 
sacrificed their life for us. I mean, can we all just, let's just give a round of applause. I know, hopefully they're all in heaven. And I know we all know this, but obviously it's just, we have so much to be thankful for, right? Just the fact that we can live and live fr freely because of them, because of their sacrifice. And it goes back since the beginning of the time, the lives that were sacrificed so that we could live. So, um, so much to be thankful for. So, so much. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. And Lord, I just thank you for all of those who have gone before us, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everyone who's laid their life down. Lord, your word says that a friend might even lay down his life for another friend, but how rare it is that someone would lay down their life for their enemies. And Father, we know that you did that for us. While we were still your enemy, you laid down your life for us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for incomprehensible gift of sacrifice. So much to be thankful for, God. You are so good. You are so, so very good. Father, thank you for this body of believers. Thank you for everybody here. Thank you that we get to come here and just take a breath. Just breathe and enjoy your rest. Enjoy your goodness. Thank you so much, God, for all that you are I pray for anybody here who's walking in just tired, just beat down and struggling. We've all been there. We've all been there. We know that the solution is to bring it to you. You are our rest every day of the week. Thank you, God. You're so good. I pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand between us, no power on earth 
o'er all creation. No life or death can separate us from your love. No hunt or death can stand between us. No
Let's sing that together. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. sing this together. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Sing it again. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love.
my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah
sing this. Let's sing this because we know He is one. He is coming back. And He is going to restore. He's going to restore everything. He's going to establish His kingdom forever and evermore. Let's sing this together. Victorious. He shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the that he is shining his favor down on. He has revealed himself to us. How humbling is that? Oh, Lord, we love you. Lord, I pray for those who came in here as Paul originally did, for those who have a heavy heart or have a burden that they cannot bear and seems to be all-consuming and I pray an agreement with the rest of this body for, and put your hand up if, you, if you've got a struggle. The person next to you is going to just uh, pray for you. We're just going to pray for you. Right, just put your hand up if you've got a struggle right now. All right? All right? You see some hands around there? Put your hand on their shoulder. Say a prayer. Oh, Lord, you are great. You are bigger than our problems. You are bigger than any struggles that we would have and we cast our cares on you right now. I pray that your Holy Spirit would come, first of all, with a word of encouragement, and then have our spirits be lifted by we see you, God, as our, as our answer. Not the predicament that we're in, but you, O oh God, as our deliverer and savior coming to our aid. And I pray, God, that whatever struggle they may be going through in life, you would vanquish that and cause them to have victory in their lives in these areas. Peace, even before they see what they're praying for. Give them peace in the name of Jesus. I pray if there's healing that needs to happen in, in their bodies, Lord, because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are our healer. And I pray, God, that you would lift and remove the pains and aches and, and, and things that need to be set right, the bones set right, the, the, uh, the, the strains, the, the things that need to be mended, supernaturally miracles, Lord. If there are things in their, their body that need a miraculous creative touch, I pray, almighty God, that you would do that for this, your children, because of the wonderful grace that you poured out on us, those you have died for. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. And it's a wonderful opportunity. We have it about at least two times a year, maybe four times a year, where you are going to share your testimonies, short testimonies, concise, of what God has done in your life that 
is an answer to prayer. And as I was praying, I've been really meditating on Matthew 11 over and over again. Probably, I go through it probably 10 times in a week, the same chapter, because I'm going to preach on it. But, uh, but I'm going to read one small portion of it as a preface for what we are going to do here, which is testify of what God is doing in our lives. And I'm going to read the scripture here first. And this particular scripture verse is found, I'm going to read Matthew 11, 1 through 7. Now, John the Baptist is a pretty awesome guy, right? John the Baptist happened to have uh, called out sin in a nation. And he'd called out sin and even in politics. He ended up getting on Herod's case for his corruption and his sin. And I tell you what, what, what it did is it landed him in jail. Well, sometimes calling out corruption may end, land you in jail. Nothing's new under the sun. But this particular scripture is an encounter with, between Jesus' disciples and John's disciples. And John was sitting in jail at the time of this. And he was very much, uh, his head was on the block. He eventually would lose his head. It says in Matthew 11, 1 through 7, when Jesus had finished giving instructions to his 12 disciples, he moved on from there to teach and preach in their towns. Now when John heard in prison, this is John the Baptist who was sitting in prison, when John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent a message through his disciples and asked him, are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? John had been working very hard and preaching what he believed was a message of repentance. And his perspective was that this isn't working out the way I thought. His expectations were not being met. He was questioning and wondering, even from Jesus, are you the one who is the Messiah? In your life, when you end up wrestling against the struggle and the downward turn of this nation and in your life, you may find like, wow, it feels like we are not going in the right direction. And you begin to have your expectations not met and disappointment, and you begin to question. It happened even to John the Baptist. Now, the response. Jesus replied to them, go and report to John what you hear and what you see. In other words, what Jesus, who was preaching the kingdom of God, what he was seeing and his disciples saw was something different than what John's disciples saw. He said, go and report to John what you hear and you see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, and those who are with leprosy are cleansed and the dead, the deaf hear and the dead are raised and the poor are told the good news. Okay, that, that's what they're supposed to report. And when we come up here today, I don't want to hear about any moaning and complaining. Because we see something different on the horizon. And that's a revival of what God is doing in the darkness. And so they reported this. And Jesus tagged it with a verse, a word that seems like, 
why do you say this? And blessed is the one who is not offended in me. In other words, your expectation of what Jesus and God would do for you in this time and your battle, you're disappointed. Do not be disappointed, church. Do not be offended at the results you're seeing. Because our God is working behind the scenes in a way to, that his kingdom, which will never end, will rise. And every kingdom in this world will fall at some times. So I want to encourage you to come up here and give testimony of what you're seeing Jesus do in this time. Would, would you come forward? So if you have a testimony... Come on up here, and you can just cue right up. Good morning. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Dee Smingy. And um, six weeks ago, I came down with COVID. And um, I just felt this was a good time to share and to thank people for all the prayers. Um, it's a journey I don't want to take again. Um, and um, it got, well, I was actually down for four weeks with it. And um, during that time, I was alone because I live alone and of course no one can be with you when you're, you have this. So um, I know God was with me. He was the one that got me through it. But um, I felt very alone and I felt helpless and I, I felt afraid. It was hard to take care of myself. And um, anyway, um, I think what I want to stress is at my lowest point, um, I knew that I needed help, and I called Barb and Cal, and I said, will you come and pray with me, for me? And so they came over that morning, and um, I felt like they came and rescued me, that God used them to rescue me because I was... At a point I couldn't pray, I felt the enemy was coming at me in my mind. Um, I was discouraged. I was, um, didn't know if I'd get better. And uh, when they came, they prayed with me, they prayed for me, we cried, we prayed in tongues. We, they just encouraged me, they stayed, they um, talked me through some things and um, just ministered to me, and um, I want to tell you that that day, things turned around for me. Um, from that time forward, um, I got my appetite back. I could eat again, um, and eat every day going forward, I made progress, and um, I knew the Lord was healing me, and... Um, Anyway, I just want to say, don't ever underestimate the power of prayer. Um, and this scripture, I felt like God wanted me to share because I didn't know where it was. And I got up this morning and he led me right to it. And it's James 5, 14 and 15. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. Um, so this is an opportunity for me to thank everybody. I know there was many people praying for me, a lot of people, and I... I just want to thank you for that and for the cards that I received. People brought food. Um, two people 
even came and cleaned my condo for me as I started feeling better. And um, you don't know how much this means when you're um, in, in a place where um, you're helpless. And um, I also want to thank God most of all for healing me, for bringing me through this, continuing to heal me. I'm still weak and um, I need, you know, I don't have my energy level back yet. But um, anyway, um, I just want to thank you all for your prayers. And I'm happy to be back. <laughs> I just have a testimony, as Pastor Kel said, about um, having light in the darkness. And um, just for all you men, I'll get right to the point. There's a particular family in China that is getting closer to accepting the Lord as their Savior. <laughs> and for all the women, I'll give you a few details. Um, basically, <laughs> I teach, uh, teach English to kids in Chinese um, in the morning before I start our homeschooling. And I've been doing that for a little over two years. And um, about two years ago, one of my students, I just felt there was a little bit of a difference in her. And I felt I wanted to talk to her about Jesus. Um, but these classes are being monitored, and I was a little nervous. And so I just trusted the Holy Spirit that if I was supposed to do it, it would work out. And um, our family sends Bibles to China through Voice of the Martyrs. And so we happened to have an example uh, that they had sent to us of a Chinese Bible. So in one of the classes, I showed that to her and asked her what it said on the front. And she couldn't really understand it because it was a different kind of dialect in a way of Chinese. So she asked her mom. So then mom's, mom comes into the video. And um, basically from there, husband comes into the video and everything, and we all start talking. And... They didn't know the name of Jesus. Um, and finally, when I said Jesus Christ, it kind of rang a bell to them a little bit. And the husband said, oh, Jesus Christ, he died? And I said, yes, but he rose again. And so we got to start talking about Jesus. So it's been a long process. It's been two years of trying to build relationship with them. And after every class that I teach, um, I'm not obligated by contract to stay. Um, but I do, I stay for extra 15 minutes and then it gets shut off and I would stay as long as I possibly could but they shut it down and they just close it up. Um, and I talk to them every time, just trying to build relationship and then when the Holy Spirit prompts me, um, I talk about Jesus and I've shared the gospel numerous times. We email regularly, um, just sending her videos and pictures from what our family is doing. Um, inviting them to come and stay with us in Michigan, and they want to do that, but because of COVID, they say they have to wait till next year. Um, so things are happening in China, and um, especially with this particular family. Um, and so if you could just all be praying for this family, um, just if you call them by the last name of Ivan, um, to the, you know, in your prayers, that first and foremost, that they will come to accept the Lord as their Savior, and, um, and a way to do that would be to connect them with somebody in China that is a Christian. Um, hopefully through Voice of the Martyrs, we're trying to perhaps arrange something where someone can connect with them. Also to get them a Bible. Um, so two weeks ago, I was talking to the daughter and I could tell right away that she wasn't feeling well when she entered the classroom. And she was sick. She had a sore throat and a cough. And so... We got through class, and at the end of it, I was talking to her mom, and the mom just said that she'd had a really bad week, too, because she found out that after five years of kind of doing okay, her brother had gone back into um, schizophrenia um, because he had stopped his medication. And so I said, well, can I please pray with you? So right there in the classroom, we prayed online, and um, I just used the name of Jesus a lot, asking for healing. Well, the next class um, even was better. The, the daughter was better. And I could tell. And the mom came onto the classroom and she said, Thank Jesus. And so that was huge that she knew that Jesus had healed the daughter. And I said, Well, yes, we thank Jesus and we're going to keep praying for your brother. 
So prayers that they'll come to Jesus because, um, you know, if we could just see the healing of her brother of schizophrenia, that they would attribute that healing to Jesus. And then also, you know, that they would just be able to get a Bible. I asked them um, last class if I could send them a Bible. Um, I was all prepared. I'd gone to the post office and gotten everything ready. I have the Chinese Bible ready to send them and another one that even has the red letters in it that Jesus spoke. And I showed it to her online and I said, I'd like to send this to you. And she was all excited. And then I heard something the husband kind of said from off camera. And she goes, um... Actually, I think because of COVID, you should probably wait to send that because we might not get it. They're holding things at the post office, their word for post office. And so she said, could you wait a year to send it? So I would love for them to be able to get connected with a Christian in China and then also um, to get a Bible and um, so if you could just be praying for those things, that would be awesome because God is moving even in the darkness of communist China. You know, a lot of things have been working together this morning. And when Jesse, uh, they announced that Jesse's daughter and uh, wife were going to Africa, that kind of amalgamated what I wanted to share with you this morning. And I shared already part of it about the, uh, I have even called you by name. I have named you, though you have not known me. And... Uh, I'll get to the point here. In uh, Psalm 139, David writes, through the voice of the Holy Spirit, you have formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my no soul knows this very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And your book, and in your book, they were all written every day that you have fashioned for me, when yet there were none of them. Several years ago, I was privileged to go to Uganda and a team here with Scott. Scott was part of the evangelistic team, and <clears throat> I was part of the teaching team. We taught pastors from around neighboring countries. We were expecting about 500, and there ended up being 1,200. So anyway, um, through the course of that activity, I was asked to minister a Sunday morning at one of the local churches. And I was preparing my message on Saturday. And I'm, I'm using a long legal pad and writing down notes and things. And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit stops me in what I was doing and brought to my mind a weird word, Rodina. <laughs> what do you do with that, you know? So I just made a little postage stamp square in the top of my notes and wrote Rodina. And so that was all that was there. And the next morning I'm in service and I had an interpreter. They speak mainly Swahili, but English also. And as I was ministering, all of a sudden I see that postage stamp size note in my upper corner of my legal pad. And I said to him, Do you have anyone named Rodina here? He said, No. <laughs> okay. We, we do have a Dina. Huh? Is she here this morning? And they speak very English like, Is Rodina here? Rodina, are you here? <laughs> no, Rodina is not here. 
You know what a sinking feeling is? You know, when you think you really blew it or missed it? So anyway, I continued the message and finished, and the pastor invited me to his home, which was about three blocks away. And so we walked to his house. And there, oh, I hope I don't wreck the computer here. Anyway, it came a knock at the door. And this was this, about an 18-year-old beautiful African girl dressed all in white. And she came into the house, and she says, about 20 people from church came to my house and said there was a white man here asking for me. <laughs> I guess I was a white man. But anyway, <laughs> pastor introduced me, and I said, well, I, I want you to know that I dr flew 5,000 miles to be here, and God put you on my heart, and he knows your name he gave me your name. Why is that significant? And she starts crying these crocodile tears. And she said, all through high school I was teased about my name because her name relates to Diana, the goddess of fertility, and so on and so forth. And they mocked her and mocked her and mocked her to the point she changed her name, threw it away. However, she used Dina at church yet. And she apologized for not being in church this morning because a dump truck had driven past and it hit a mud puddle and splashed her head to toe and she had to go home and clean. She couldn't come to church with a dirty shirt, dress. So I said, do you realize that God knows you by name? And she starts crying again. And so anyway, that ended in a prayer session and she said, this today, was the last day I was ever going to come to church again. Because I felt insignificant. I was going to move to the big city. And I said, that would not be good. And she says, no, God really knows my name? God really knows my name? I said, yes, he does. And he sent me to tell you so. And then after she had left, I asked the pastor. Now, distinctively, I wrote Rodina, and her name is Dina. Can you shed any light on that? I said, yes. In Swahili, the prefix ro means to throw away, means to get rid of. So she threw her name away, and that's a... I want you to be encouraged through this that he knows who you are. If you feel insignificant, hopefully you won't have sent somebody from 5,000 miles away or use the internet to reach China to let them know he knows you and you need to know him. Thanks. Hey, church fam. Uh, as you know, I work in the ICU, and uh, things have been tough there. Uh, a lot of people dying, and that's not unusual. My whole career has been in trauma, ICU, ER. Um, but this last year and a half or so has been a little more difficult. And uh, first part of March, I um, had a patient um, come into the ICU really sick, but awake on a on a CPAP, BiPAP machine, and uh, called her family, said that she had gotten there. I interviewed her, and um, and then an hour and a half later, uh, she was dead. And when I called the family to say, hey, the, I mean, this, things just went catastrophically poorly. We knew she was really, really sick. Um, they, they were kind of screaming and crying on the phone, and it went on for quite a long time. And, uh, and, and then her husband came in and he was grieving a lot and, uh, and it was sad and being in the career for a long time, I'm used to being, I can grieve with families. I'm okay with that, that Valley for a moment. Um, I'm comfortable with, with other people's grief and sadness in the acute phase. Um, uh, and so I was sad for them, uh, and that was okay. Uh, and then I found myself 
a few days later, I'm still sad. And then two weeks later, I'm still sad and kind of angry. And then Vic and I were watching the, one of those emergency shows we like to watch. And I just couldn't watch it. Like, it was really putting me in a funk. And uh, so um, I went to do dishes and clean the kitchen a little bit. I mean, you got to know it's bad when I'm going to go do that. <laughs> and, and so... Uh, so I came back and sat down next to Vic, and you know I'm teary anyway, right? Because I'm comfortable with that. But but this was different, and uh, so um, anyway, so I'm just in a, in a not a normal place for me, and uh, so ended up coming to church um, as usual, and was talking with Randy. And uh, Randy was just, so Vic was fantastically empathetic during that time. Randy was empathetic and, um, you know, just listened to the story and, and, and asked me good questions. Um, and as we were talking, um, the Lord brought a verse uh, out of um, Isaiah 53. He said, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no stately form or majesty to attract us, no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And I was like, the Lord's acquainted with my grief. And if Jesus is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, it's okay as a Jesus follower, to be acquainted with sorrow and other people's grief. And, and it's all right to do that. Um, and then, uh, so we came in, so it was just a touch from the Lord, a, a verse that had application, uh, empathetic wife, empathetic friends. Um, part of that process, just getting my heart back on track and, and knowing that the Lord knows my name, knows me and knows where I'm at. And then the praise, praise and worship was just killer. And, you know, it just hit me every time. And then Jason Frank had the message. And I'm telling you, it was just a quiver full of arrows. Just hit my heart, hit my heart, hit my heart in a corrective way where I was, I was off, you know, I was letting my attitude get bad. And then in an instructive way, how to do better. And then in an encouraging way, that, that you've got a legacy to go with, just all the things, every five minutes, arrows in my heart, just all the good stuff that you need when you're a believer, the correction and the encouragement, all at the same time. It was great. Um, and so it was, so my testimony is that God is good and he knows where we're at. He's acquainted with our grief. He's acquainted with my grief. I'm not preachy. He's acquainted with my grief and he met me where I was at and brought me back to a place of being okay, with being okay with other people's grief, and kind of when I say back to baseline, so back to baseline. So I just want to testify how good the Lord is to, to touch my heart in a moment when I really needed it. Good morning, Jim Clark. So, Tim, I would like to encourage you publicly. We've come into Metro several times, and whew, there is a wonderful face that we see there. Several times where I think I can speak for Roxanne, we just feel so uh, taken care of, I guess. I, I don't know how to say that. We've been in hospital situations, you know, for whatever reason, Metro was too busy or something, and it just wasn't the same. But when we'd come in there and you'd walk up or you'd come into our room, the man of God has arrived. <laughs> and, and I don't say that in a flippant way. There's something about the calling of God and you know when you get up and express real 
This is really where I'm at and all that. And I think of you often with these situations I could not handle at all. I'd pass out, obviously, with most of them. But um, just the grief of people and, you know, just entering into that every day. It's like the police officers. You know, you all pray for them? I mean, the cops are under fire. Not necessarily in the bubble of Hudsonville area. But out in this country, they're under fire in every way. I can't even imagine. So thank you from the Clarks for just seeing that lovely face when we walk in, full of compassion and praying with us and all that. It's just so cool. So. Don't go down yet. We have, you open the door. You open the door, Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we are going to pray for the police, the blue, hmm. thin blue line. Yeah. We're going to pray for those who are in the military, who are being right now stressed, not only with a confusion in their mind that the orders that do not seem to be the call of a military person. Yeah. We are going to pray for our country. And, and we're going to continue on with joy and testimony. But Tim, would you come up here? Jeff, would you come up here? Uh, some other guys, uh, come up here. Thank you, Wade. Someone else pray. One, gonna... one thing I'll just uh, sidestep is, how many Vietnam vets are in this room? Any? Vietnam. One, yes, two. Yes, yes. Can I just apologize in proxy? for the stupidity of how you were treated when you came back. My, my brother-in-law was spat on in the airport when he came back. They spat on him, okay? He was shot up, and, and so I just apologize for all that stupidity that happened in those days, and, uh, and we'll also pray for you as well. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just lift up... Uh, all the folks that are out there laying down their lives. The police are just like the military in that they're laying down their lives every day to keep us safe. And they're the ones we call when there's an emergency. And so I pray for each one, Lord. I pray for uh, all my relatives, my nephews that are uh, officers, and all the people in this room, any, any in this room that have been connected with law enforcement or military or uh, in the medical field that are, yes. that are stressed, overstressed. We just lift them up, Lord, and we ask for your grace to flood their hearts right now, wherever they are. Uh, Vietnam vets, Lord, I just pray that you would especially set them free. Yeah from yes, any Lord. unforgiveness that they have toward anyone who has treated them wrongfully. And we just pray for all the people that acted in ignorance, stupidity. We pray for them that you would, uh, Lord, they don't know what they're doing. And I ask that you would uh, forgive them, Lord, give them revelation. And if they don't know you, that you would save them in Jesus' name. And I just pray uh, for, the, for the men that raise their hands in this room. You would set them free from anything from the past that has affected their view of humanity, of men, women, whatever. Any comments that were made, that those would be erased from their minds and you would fill them with your love in the name of Jesus. And they could go on completely free at this point in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I do want to lift up my fellow healthcare workers from uh, housekeeping all the way up to my physician colleagues and in all areas across the United States and, and really across the world right now. Father, I know that as we've been talking just in our little microcosm in the metro ICU, people are having a hard time sleeping. They are feeling the same anger, the same stress, the same sadness. Lord, they're struggling in some of their relationships too. And Father, you are faithful. You are good. You met me, and I'm not special. Lord, I ask that you would take these times and these seasons to draw people to you, to your heart, to you, where they would find real healing, where they would find real restoration of their hearts, where they would find real, true comfort as you send the comforter. Lord, I thank you for it from my pre-hospital colleagues who actually have been seeing this stuff, the, the trauma upon trauma every day. Um, even 
pre-pandemic, Lord. I ask that you'd continue to heal hearts. Draw people to you. You use every situation, Lord, to call, soften hearts, and bring them to you. And then restore in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we just pray for those who are in uh, assisted care homes right now. You know my heart for that. And I, and I see and I hear of the pain of loneliness that Dee ended up sharing, even though she had her own place here. These people are in their rooms, and, and so much of it is the loneliness, Lord. And I pray that you would, be, would come through for them in a way. We do pray that you would free them up yeah. to be able to again be able to uh, interact with their fellow brothers and sisters. We pray, Lord, that the scourge of this uh, uh, virus would be gone. It's, it's scourge that has affected this nation. And it, I pray, Lord, that it would, you would intervene and push it aside and take away the fear, the long-term fear that has affected and brought low so many people. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would be our rescue, Lord that you'd give courage to people who are struggling. And I pray that you would raise up leaders, righteous leaders in this nation that would end up standing for the rights of the individual and for health, that would speak life. I come against the spirits of darkness, which is, is propagating a spirit of death, whether it be from the cradle to the grave death down the, the, the abortion area and all the way through those that have turned the medical system in some way and injured themselves. They are underneath the stress. They are even confused at times. What do I do? And I pray, dear God, that you would give clarity to this nation, pull the malaise and the shadow of death off of this, not only this nation, but the world. I pray that you, through the gospel, would bring life and light, break through. Let, let the hunger for life be something that, it, that you respond to in a way that brings a revival in the world, in our homes, in our lives, and in our nation and the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. And we cheer you on, O mighty captain of the Lord's host that is warring on our behalf. The spiritual warfare that is right now in the heavenlies over areas and cities and, and communities, you, O oh God, are calling the shots. And your angelic force, which we praise God, are quietly, even without us seeing, are warring on our behalf that we who are the beneficiaries of your mercy and grace and your battle, Lord. First of all, one on the cross, but then given, given to us by your spirit, Lord. I pray that you'd empower each member in this church to stand up and speak of you, O oh Lord, and that the power of the Holy Spirit would come out of our lives and in our hands. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Prayer is our main weapon. I just wanted to share about a couple of testimonies. Um, it's appropriate with it being Memorial Weekend. This shirt is memory of my father-in-law who served in 301st Airborne, or 301st Squadron. He was the first B-17 squadron to go over to Africa during World War II. And he ended up a uh, wing commander and flew 53 missions. And he didn't know Jesus when he went over. And he had nightmares for years. And I, I remember when I met him, when Barb and I were dating, he was, he was already retired. He was just this humble man he'd never known. But it was years later, through one young pastor, he, he, knew, he found Jesus. And Jesus healed him from all those nightmares, from 53 missions. And he's a hero. And I thank God for him and the other men that went before but then a couple of weeks ago, we got to go, and, and my son, Sean, and his wife, Stephanie, are military, and, and we were blessed with a grandson a year ago. 
and we didn't know this, but they said, you know, Dad, we didn't think we were going to be able to have kids. Through their experience in the military, they've both been exposed to radiation and some other things and stuff. And he said, yeah, I just knew by the time I was 21 I wasn't going to be able to have kids. And God blessed them with the grandson. We almost lost Stephanie at, at birth. She lost two liters of blood, and God brought her through it. And, and we, I'm just thankful because God, God has blessed us and brought our kids through that, and they love Jesus, and they're serving him, and we just thank God for it. Uh, I may start off with a joke because I guess if uh, my father and the son, then uh, I guess the Holy Spirit's going to show up next. Um, <laughs> so, you ever get that feeling in your chest where you know you're supposed to go up and trying to argue with the Lord that it's just a coffee? Um, <laughs> so, he's he's been. Uh, your name? Christian. My, my name's Christian, uh, Christian Barnes. Um, and God's really been pointing things back to me. Um, I'm uh, one of the sons that loves Jesus now, uh, but it wasn't always that way. Um, growing up, I kind of used some uh, betrayal in the church um, as an excuse to get away for, I don't know, over 10 years. And lately, I've been trying to find excuses and trying to find the things wrong with the church and the people around me. And, like, I was praying on what the Lord wants me to do, and he put Jeremiah 3 in my heart, which is talking about return to me. And <laughs> that was what hit my heart, but I kept reading, and it's talking about false prophets, and it's talking about the church. Um, and I was so focused on that, I'm thinking, like, yeah, this is, this is what the Lord's trying to speak to me about the church and other people that are in my life. And I had a counseling session with Cal again, and he just asked me some questions on where my heart's at. And <laughs> the Lord put Jeremiah 3 back in my heart, and it's just been like, <laughs> he's not trying to point out the things wrong with my circumstances as I, as I try to complain about my coworkers, as I try to complain about the things around me is like John was met with expectation when he didn't see things going where he wanted and that just kind of hit me this morning because like I'm trying to look at everything around me instead of just letting God work on me <laughs> and it's it's not easy but like I know he loves me he doesn't need <laughs> doesn't need to work on the false prophets he doesn't need to work on the church because <laughs> he, he needs to work on me to be part of the church <laughs> My name is Harry Leith, and I, I just got back from New Orleans area for about 10 days. And um, I, I used to live there, and I love that there was there recording some music. But there's a place called Mandeville, Louisiana, and they have this beautiful lakefront. Oh, my gosh. How many know what Lake Pontchartrain is? It's a huge lake, a uh, 20-mile bridge over it. It's, uh, it's beautiful. And I love going there and praying. And I'm so, I, I get out of the my van, and I'm praying, and there's these two young ladies laying on a blanket, fully dressed, and it's very hot, and I'm like, I'm thinking, wow, this is kind of unusual, fully dressed, and, and they started a little conversation with me, and now, I know, I don't want to say what the, the organization is, but it's cultic, and they send out missionaries for two years when they turn 18. You probably know what I'm, what I'm talking about, Right? But instead of getting into all the doctrine, instead of talking about our differences, you know what I just basically told them? I said, you know, I'm an evangelist, and here's what I like to tell people. Most people, most humans, love, in a sense, 
kind of a religious, or they have a religious atmosphere, a religious viewpoint, and they want to work to earn God's favor. It's almost like from earth to heaven, like the Tower of Babel. Man, humanity loves to do things to reach heaven, and they will build. The technology of that day was brick and mortar, and they used that technology to build a heaven. And so here's what I told them, and I, and, and I want to tell you, I wasn't even going to come up today, <clears throat> but sitting back there, the Lord said, there's someone here that needs to hear this. They're struggling. So here's, but here's what I said. I said, listen, humanity wants to, to earn their salvation, work. And, and of course, this cult that they're part of is putting them to work all the time, right? So here's my story. A little story, a little parable. I said, can you imagine if all of humanity were to line up on the coast of California? And we all, and heaven was Hawaii, and we all have to go swimming. And we have to swim and make it there. That's what religious, religious people want to do. They want to earn it and boast, hey, look how far I've gotten. But nobody... No man, no woman, no child could ever swim to Hawaii from California, right? So here's what I said. It's not by works. It's not by swimming. But ready? Jesus came and built a bridge. And now we get to walk on it. And he did all the work. Now you can jump off the bridge. You can turn around and go back because we have free will. But Jesus built the bridge. And though the way that walk in the spirit, now we walk with him, shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? So I said all that to say this. The Lord told me, uh, sitting back there, go up because someone here is swimming. You've been working hard. You're not going to make it. You can't swim to Hawaii. And he says, let me put you on the bridge. You've been raised maybe with a legalistic set of parents or you've been raised with this works mentality and I'm just here to tell you he loves you so much and you could never earn that bridge it's by faith amen so stop swimming okay Lord bless you If you're one of those people trying to swim, <laughs> trying to make it on your own, and you've been working hard, and it feels like you're sinking or drowning, Jesus is the bridge. He offers salvation. And I encourage you to come up here, and we will pray for you, and God will translate you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. He's loved you. While you were dead in your trespasses and sins, he died for you then, that you might be rescued and brought into his kingdom. So if that's you, I'm going to end up opening the altar here as we leave, as you end up fellowshipping with one another, and as you go and celebrate with friends tomorrow, I challenge you all, Point to Jesus who is the hero, the, the one who, who gave his life for us, laid, shed his blood. Thank, yes, and remember all those men who have laid their lives down and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Pray for those who have, are the, the gold star families, those who are, are living with the pain of having lost a loved one in the military. Yes, do that. Thank them. Give them their due. But I, I just challenge you, make sure that you spend some time in all of your discussions mentioning Jesus, the one who died specifically for you. All right? And again, the altar will be open here, and there will be people here to pray for you. If you didn't have the courage to put your hand in the air, but you would like to make sure you are on that path to heaven, you can come up here. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Go in Jesus' name. I hope you've enjoyed this. To hear other messages, go to facebook.com forward slash GCF Church or youtube.com 
forward slash GCF messages. You may also follow Georgetown Christian Fellowship with our app. Go to either iOS or the Play Store for Android and search for Word Server. That's one word, Word Server. And install the free application. There you will get all of our messages, including streaming capabilities.